It's happening. Igboho lawyers have tackled Yoruba elders for not intervening, coming in one accord. A few of the monarchs did raise alarm to say, look at the Igbo leaders. As soon as Malami said there is possibility of political solution, they put themselves together and they went to see Buhari over Nandi Kano. You know, because, I mean, this is really a serious uh, matter for them. You know, they went to see and to see how they can get their son out. They know that what their son is fighting for is not as though he has committed any form of crime. As a matter of fact, should I interest you, the federal government are the ones destabilizing the East. It's a plot to make sure that the East is reduced, is depopulated, and whatever they are doing, they will not succeed. Okay? They will not succeed. And so they went together to, you know, speak to Buhari with regards to release of Onandi Kano. I mean, a few Yoruba uh, monarchs came together to say, please, let's come together and go and see President Muhammad Buhari over Igboho. But it did not really happen. Them working together as a single unit. And for this cause, you know, um, the lawyer has, you know, uh, a Buhari lawyer has blamed, seriously blamed, you know, uh, uh, Yoruba leaders saying, what are you people doing? You know, please do not forget to give us a thumbs up, like us, share, subscribe, click on the notification button so you can get all our latest news. Let's get all the details. The recent meeting between Southeast elders and President Muhammad Buhari in the State House of Abuja has continued to stir up mixed reaction in the country. One of the focuses of the meeting, according to a report on Chinese television, was the release of their son, who is currently under the custody of the Department of State Security Services. The leaders of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazil Nandikano, have stirred up many waters in the country over the agitation for section before he was eventually arrested from Kenya to continue his trial at the Federal High Court in Abuja. Despite all the charges the Nigerian government has brought against Nandi Kanu, Southeast elders have, however, continued to plea for his release and pardon. One cannot ascertain if this plea is to mount peace is to mount up pressure to ensure that there is peace in the southeast region of the country because Kanu could lose in court and face persecution, but the elders continue to stand right behind him. There have been several comments on why the issue of Sunday Boho has not been consigned to either the southeast leaders, governors, or elders. Some people have argued that Sunday Boho seemed neglected and ignored by the Benin Republic, where he's currently being detained by the people of his own. According to a report on Punch, Belumi, the lawyer who who secured the release of the 12th age of Sunday Boho and one of the lawyers of the Yoruba right activists has called on Yoruba elders, put yourself together, let's sort out Sunday Boho. Yoruba elders have failed Sunday Boho and sh should learn from Igbo counterparts. Let me say Yoruba elders have failed Sunday Boho and should learn from Igbo counterparts who recently visited the president with a demand for the release of Mazo Nandi Kano. He described the intervention of Igbo leaders as a show of communion and tribal loyalty to one of their own, Mazio Nandikano. The lawyer said the move underscored the calculated compassion of the Igbos to one of their very own, even at the risk of whatever it may come and scorn with the federal government. They went ahead. In a statement he released on Sunday titled, Sunday Boho Anu Nandikano Travel. Yoruba leaders needed to learn from the Igbos. Belumi called on all leaders and elders, the governors of the Southwest region, that they should turn a blind, that they have turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to the suffering and agony of Chief Sunday Igbohu, who the, he said was seeking a better life for his people. All he did was come out and defend his people. In intervention, Sunday Igbohu has come into all this. And everyone now deserts him, including the elders and the leaders, but not Igbo leaders. They will not desert Nandi Kano. I mean, you have spoken very well, and I really applaud you because, I mean, it's clear to every one of us 
we can see for ourselves, like they will say, seven up, we say when I was growing up, the advert will say, seven up, the difference is clear. As soon as Malami gave the hint that there is possibility of, you know, um, possibility for, you, you know, uh, uh, political solution, mm -hmm. Igbo leaders was in on it. They picked it up immediately. No, they did not let it land. Hot as it was, they went ahead. Although there have been different words here and there, uh, what's it called now? I wear you saying that, uh, oh, why, why should not release on the canon? And I'm wondering, is a national threat? Is a national threat? Is he as national threat as your book around that is ravaging your, your area and your people? Your, the, in fact, book around are not threatening parents that the children should be withdrawn from school. What, what is that going into? Do you understand what is going to happen at all? Do you know what is happening at all in the in the north, do you have a clue? And yet, this people take it with levity. I mean, the president cannot be bothered. His daughter is um, is well read. His son is well read. So other people's children are garbage. A nation is not built by one man. Just like a single tree, no matter how big you are, you can never make a forest. Neither can a single broom sweep and effectively do the work. You need a collection of orders. You need somebody else other than yourself. And so when you think that you and your children are the only one to be educated, it tells us how selfish truly really you are so that they can come and you know impose themselves on people and become leaders because the next the others are subordinate and truly do not have an understanding of what peris and matters really are so you lord it over them and like we see in the north where they wear that they are black and red kind of thing you know blowing the trumpet for these people they just want people to serve them and it's a wicked phenomenon it's a very wicked place to be where you don't want the other person to learn become independent where you don't want the other person to become a human being all you want the person to be is to be your subordinate ever serving ever below you how do we do these things? And we are comfortable in our skin. And some of us, we go to churches and go to mosques. And yes, we say we are serving God. I wonder the God truly, really, we are serving because those characteristics are not found in him. And like a son, even if it does not look like the father should have traces that you can see. Okay? Because you can have a son that looks exactly like the mother. Okay? So... <clears throat> or the grandfather or grandparents or somebody else. I mean, gene, these things are gene, yes? So even if, again, okay, even if, even if, you know, Sunday Boho has not done anything for you, what has he done for the people? The governors could not do it. The governors could not do it. They knew the people were suffering. They knew, uh, I mean, Sunday, that we have, that we have, uh, uh, full any ban on open grazing. Sunday Bo is a big part. Think about it. Leave us a comment. We'd we'll love to hear from you. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye for now.